Hi and welcome to After Hours with Bo and Tammy right here on these Changing Times Radio dot ning dot com. How are you, Bo? Pissed. Oh, I'm awful pissed. Well, uh, there's a lot going on, and and um, of course, Rocco still be maintained in McHenry County, Illinois, uh, without being arraigned. Of course, he's got his scheduled at arraignment tomorrow morning. Uh, last time, of course, he w he did not claim the name. Uh, he did not contract, and uh, we're waiting on something that uh, the court does not have jurisdiction over him, of course, uh, to offset or discharge congressional bankruptcy because he's not married to the use. Never has been. She was always contracted with that state, the other father, and that is what is written. Yeah, well, that's a big part of it. You know, he's been in there uh, going on two weeks. Uh, it'll be two weeks Thursday, I believe. Friday. Friday. And um, uh, let my people go. I mean, I don't, you know, see uh, why when we follow the rules of the exchequer, we play the game accordingly. We, we win the game accordingly, and we still come up against a brick wall, mostly because of the media weight out there, okay, because uh, we have all these lemmings that are following Alex Jones, or, let me ask you something, has Alex Jones sued Congress? Has he ever pointed the finger exclusively at Congress? Okay, all right, and all these other guys, okay, we are changed, I want my constitutional rights. Now, they had a good story today. Though, I mean, I, I like them for their news, you know, but this activist on there was an activist uh, that promotes constitutionalism and, you know, First Amendment rights, blah, blah, blah. And if you listen to any of our stuff at all, you know what utter nonsense that is. Okay? It's just, it's just more bullshit for you to fill yourselves up with, okay, and, and keep you from seeing uh, the truth of the matter which is that they took your rights from you in the first place in order to be able to sell them back to you. Right, Wake like, the fuck up! Right. And this is relative to Matthew 27. When the, the media presented to the sheeple what, and asked them whether or not, well, do you, do you like this system? Do you want to patronize this system? And ultimately it came down to, quote, let him be crucified. Yes, we like our benefits. We like our rights. We like our, our uh, pretend foods wrapped up in shiny packaging and everything else. And, and this is the point we're at now. This is the, the absolute. Are the citizens, sheeple, citizens, individuals, free man on the land, patriots, are they going to realize what this is and stand up on behalf of their fellow human being? Or are they going to allow Jesus to continuously be crucified and, and maintained in such manners? Or are they just all false prophets because uh, we've reached out to many of these individuals, okay, and explained to them how the game works, but they want to go on playing their game, uh, such as uh, a ride class, we got some more breaking information for you on how bad they're screwing us. Well, I'm going to go back in there and plead some more. And these, you know, poor idiot sheriffs, constitutional sheriffs, I saw some news come through today. Uh, they're standing, quote, against the FBI, and they're really not if they're adhering to the Bill of Rights and, and all of these uh bullshit laws that were implicated or put into place or put in action to enable human trafficking and um, you know as we're as things are playing out we're finding more and more that perhaps these law enforcement are also guilty uh, we have allowed them the opportunity to learn now we've we've uh, personally contacted them um, on a continual basis for the last year, reaching out to them on all of our shows and all of our teachings, and again, uh, personal contact uh, throughout this time that Rocco's been in there, and um, 
you know, maybe they don't know what to do. Maybe they're so used to um, taking up these orders from these attorneys in black dr dresses. Maybe they're scared or they're fearful, but Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. For those that save their own life, you shall lose it. And that's, again, it's crunch time. And that's the time we're at now. And this is the situation to the minute. All the paperwork that needs to be entered has been entered. Everything is there. The, uh, the monies are waiting for the sheriff that executes the first order under the public law, okay, which hasn't happened yet. And uh, they're going to find out quickly that they don't know already that their departments are running dry. I don't know what they're running off of, fumes, donations, contributions, charities. I don't know, those that are aiding and abetting the known enemy as they were found guilty uh, to uh, the uh uh, matter of genocide, okay, all right, Congress is killing you all worldwide, GMO foods, uh, we got uh, Obama, so, you know, he's going to go ahead and get the okay to start killing U.S. citizens uh, on U.S. soil, uh, we got, uh, you know, CIA stirring up shit everywhere in Syria and Libya and uh, you know, Syria and Iran are on targets again, they want to see what you people will continue to consent to especially because they're telling you what they're doing in the Belfast Telegraph this week the CIA said well what we do is if if there's a need for somebody to have child porn on their computer we'll put it there for them if there's a need for somebody to have naked pictures on their cell phones we'll put it there for them that's what the CIA does it produces intelligence it produces information and then they uh, go ahead and locate the law enforcement from there and then law enforcement investigates these things finds the child porn finds the naked pictures finds the whatever the CIA wanted to put there to maintain the production and that's where the investigation stems from so it's always created out of artificial intelligence of course promoted through the CIA and now this, that the CIA is actually admitting to this if the sheep will do not stand up at this point in time, then those lemmings can go ahead and go into the system as well because we've done everything in our power and um, our authority, but it's up to the sheeple citizens whether or not they're going to continue to patronize this thing and call it their father or not. Like I said, it's crunch time. Jesus is on the cross. If the sheeple don't stand up, that's up to them. You know, as I've stated before, I'm not the most eloquently spoken radio talk show host, okay, nor did I ever have any ambitions of being a radio talk show host, okay, I find myself here out of the uh, laws of necessity at this point, all right, and there's nobody else willing, apparently, or capable of doing it, um, but uh, as I've tried to lay out for you, Tammy's tried to lay out for you, Rocco has tried to lay out for you, all right? We have others out there that are walking the walk, and, uh, you know, those numbers are few and far between, but they get it. There are a few out there that get it, all right? Now, now since uh, studying with Tammy, you know, I've, come to understand the truth of the matter, the rules of the exchequer, how far this goes back, okay, this isn't about the United States of America and that piece of paper, Constitution, Declaration of Independence, yeah, well, it's about that, but not in the way you think, okay, these are things, these are mechanisms that they used to hook you in, to be their sureties, so they can offset their congressional bankruptcy and stuff their pockets at your demise. Articles of com uh, incorporation maintained by a business. It's a corporation. Each one. Article 1, Article 2, Article 3, Article 4, Amendment to Article whatever. These are articles of incorporation of a criminal enterprise, a business model. 
and to patronize it is the same thing as allowing Walmart to human traffic. Yeah, because it's all the corporations too. Through these articles of incorporation, these corporations that are listed with the Council on Foreign Relations are the government. Absolutely. They are the government. Absolutely. Google government. Absolutely. All right? Now, wrap your minds around that and think about that flag that so many of you are still saluting, being patriotic to, paying your taxes, voting, okay? All this shit is just leading us further down the road. Well, and, and as people need to consider, you know, when you're laid off from your job in one of these corporations, and then you seek forever to find another job with another corporation of the corporate governance, and you take a pay cut, and you take a hit to your retirement, and you take a hit to your 401k pro programs, and you take all of these um, hits, that's the same corporation doing this. It doesn't matter what its face is, Sears, Walmart, uh, Google, Amazon, any one of these things are your corporate governance. So you were laid off for a reason, you were fired for a reason, you lost your job for a reason, and that was to put you down on your knees to teach you to be a better PC product. And when you're taught to be a good boy or a bad boy and a bad girl, you're taught that you are these things. Um, ultimately, you you patronize that thing to a greater extent because you feel lost, you feel alone, you feel like you've done something wrong. It's just a business model, and, and as Phil told me one time, it's just business. That's all it is. It's just business. Your children are human trafficked to make money for these corporations. You are trafficked to make money for these corporations. You're murdered every day. 42 women a day, 42 females a day are dying from what they say is prescription drug overdose. Those are the intentions of these medications, and we've been reporting on that the last couple months here uh, since we were able to evidence the facilitation of genocide against the human populace uh, through the medical industry. You know, Ativan, Lorazepam, uh, Hydrocodone, all of these medications are now being used to execute human beings through lethal injection. But you are diagnosing yourself by the television programming. Uh, you're running to the doctor for these things, and so you want to be sleepy. You want to be, uh, you know, maintained in this comfortable zone where you don't have to deal with anything, and everything else can go on around you. Even though you're being slaughtered slowly through low-intensity conflict, fourth-generation warfare, you're, you're not. Or quickly, made. if you have suicide by cop. Absolutely, and you know, these things are all. Which uh, almost happened to Rocco. Yep. If we hadn't been on the phone with them, they would have murdered him. Right. They were in the action of doing this. Um, I'm still waiting on some type of order that ordered this. Uh, they had tased him at least 12 times from the recording that I could hear. And um, at one point in time, it sounded like he was stuck with something. Uh, a female voice came on and, and said, this is going to pinch. He said, what are you doing? What are you doing to me? And then within 10 minutes, he started getting kind of uh, loopy. His voice started uh, getting slurred and, and whatever else. And ultimately, uh, they said they were going to lay him on his back. And at one point in time, he's saying that he's having chest pains and everything else. And at that point in time, you know, it was just after that, after they had tased him so many times that I coughed so that they could hear me in his pocket. And at that point in time, they found the phone, of course, and told him it was dead and closed it. And that was very interesting to me to witness that in all of its actuality because, um, again, I don't know if it was the marshals intentionally trying to kill him because, of course, there's always an order that has to be uh, that they're executing. And so I want to know who, who was uh, directing them to do these things against Robert Richard. <laughs> there will be accountability. I mean, it's not like uh, I'm going away anytime soon or, or Bo's going away anytime soon. There and it's not like this process is going to be stopped now anyways. The writing's on the wall. If you guys cannot see what's going on in the mainstream news, Christy, uh, we've got uh, more uh, you know, shenanigans with other politicians you know, that's being broadcast 
uh, exposed on the mainstream media. We got teachers going into the shoot. One the day I covered, a uh, female uh, was, um, you know, uh, claiming that her nude photo has been stolen, you know, when in reality somebody got her cell phone, posted them on a uh, revenge site. Okay, now she's done with, uh, with uh, uh, being a fifth grade science teacher. Okay, I mean, you know, you know how they would have covered this up in the past. Okay, same thing with you cops out there. They're now starting to feel the brunt. Okay, all right. I, I, you know, I, I put this stuff out on my YouTube channel every single day. Uh, Tammy covers it on her show. We cover it on the Bow and Rockwell show. Um, you know, it's coming down, and I can't even keep up with all the stories anymore. I mean, I mean, you know, look at this. I, I've got a stack of papers right here that is nothing but, you know, cops, attorneys, you know, judges, all getting arrested. All right? Now, that's because their funding has been shut off. I don't know how many, I don't know how, how, how else i got to prove this. I put the... Uh, IMF screenshots up on the Dropbox the other day. Okay, you can see them when their uh, funding was cut. Uh, the uh, House of Lords isn't, uh, you know, supplying any treasury monies to these uh, criminals. Uh, the, you know, you know, th this is the first song we played was uh, "Big Money." All right. And that's what this is about. This is about big money now because throughout the course of history, these psychopaths have devised this mechanism to siphon off your wealth going back at least a thousand years. Okay, I'm going to say 1180, uh, the uh, separation of the spiritual and Temporal, you know, at least, but it, it was going on before that too. This this scheme of bankruptcy is something these psychopaths came up with a long time ago, and they've hit it and cloaked it very uh, connivingly, and gotten you to consent with it through the generations. You're brought up in these schools, you know, by your uh, indoctrinated parents. You know, think it's okay to send you to a state-sponsored school. Who's gonna? You know, which is going to turn around and, and turn you into a better product so you can perpetuate this system of throwing you under the bus for uh, offsetting their congressional bankruptcy and lining their pockets. Okay, now, we called them on this. All right? Now, I don't know why we don't have any uh, other uh, quote-unquote gurus out there jumping on board with this because I personally think the reason is that because every goddamn one of them are a bunch of uh, CIA agents. And it could be. I mean, you're we're looking at this thing that was created as a marquee. Just this house, a tent where a circus is performed. You got court jesters all over the place, and that's all this is. And going back to the public school system itself or Hitler youth camps. Now, every one of our listeners right now and, and throughout time, you know, they've had dealings with their, their out of control teenagers, their out of control children, and they're blaming their children for not listening to them. But they're the ones that are putting their children in these public school systems where they're being taught that their parents don't have any authority and that their parents are retarded. They're being taught that they're their parents can't tell them what to do, can't do this, can't do this. And so the authority, the absolute institution of family, of community, has been destroyed through the action of low-intensity conflict, which is a war tactic. These are war tactics. As somebody tells your child, your child, that you are not the authority, that's automatically busting apart the institutionalization or the institution of family. That's its purpose. To separate you, to divide and conquer, to enable it to do what it's doing. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And preying on your kids. You send them to school to be preyed on. 
Absolutely. Okay, by by uh, feminism, you know, Alinsky method. Um, you know, your 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 boys are being feminized. Okay, your 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 females are being empowered by feminism. So, which to uh, perpetuate this whole system? All right, which is exactly the setup going back to 1180 with the uh, uh, separation of the spiritual and temporal. Um, you know, Tammy was posting earlier, I saw in one of the rooms how uh, the, uh, oh, what was that that you were saying? Now I lost my train of thought here. You know, um, the choice? males have been demonized, you know, this system of demonizing the males and taking the males off of the protection so the females run to the other daddy, which is the state. And the predator. Now, now anybody... Uh, that uh, hasn't seen the King's Bankruptcy up to, out there. This is a YouTube video. And it's on my channel, Bono's Entertainment. You need to listen to that because that video pretty much outlines just about everything on how this situation is going on. Up until and including the point where Congress, calling itself the King, declares bankruptcy in 1933 and through covert uh, means well, actually what 29 was the bankruptcy okay and that's when the Jiva convention also occurred 33 was bankruptcy but they had posture setting up for this last bankruptcy yeah. using the 1929 Geneva convention they're all postures all okay. the old charters Absolutely. okay the Magna Carta um, the um, Sesta K. Vyak the uh, Declaration of Independence uh, Articles of Confederation uh, Constitution of the United States of America and it goes on and on it's all posturing and it's all building a more complex matrix you know dumbing down the people with the foods and the educational system um, to the point where many of you can't even comprehend what it is we're even talking about and you'll shut off that that's what's known as cognitive dissonance and when you go study the aspect of Stockholm Syndrome, you're patronizing a captor in exchange for protection. Everybody stopped suffering from Stockholm Syndrome. They think, well, this is scary. I'm going to be arrested. I'm going to be arrested. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. If you save your life, you'll lose it. Period. No narcissism. No, absolutely no narcissism. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. There's no question there. He didn't. He didn't tell you well if you feel like it or, or um, you know, if you arm yourself first, which is so stupid. Why would you be doing that? That's what the Pope does. The Pope has armed guards around him. He's got a a bulletproof car. Yeah, trust in God. It. Trust in God. Hey, uh, I, I got a full uh, staff of uh, security today, don't I? Absolutely. He has no faith. He has no hope and he has no charity whatsoever and his priests don't either. But I don't even care about him, you know, at the moment. Okay, he's a figurehead. All right? He's he's running diversion for Congress. Absolutely. We've got all these lemmings out there saying, oh, the Vatican is behind it all. And the Freemasons, and yeah, they're a part of it. Okay, you know what they are? They're tentacles of Congress through the 1947 National Security Act in some manner or fashion. But going back to this bankru bankruptcy in 1933, all right, 1933, that's how long ago? We're uh, talking 81 years ago, and Congress appoints itself through covert means uh, the trustee of the bankruptcy. And then says you're the one that's bankrupt. Yeah. Yeah, they, they told you you're the one that's bankrupt, but they're the ones that are bankrupt. Then they appoint themselves through uh, covert means, like they said, it, it looks like uh, the, the Federal Reserve is the uh, trustee of the bankruptcy. Uh, the Federal Reserve is another tentacle of Congress. Right, it's a mechanism, and it only moves according to market condition. It's reservation on rights. And so who they appoint the strong-arm thugs to be overseers of the bankruptcy is the U.S. Marshals. Okay, that's right in your face US marshals overstate overseeing the bankruptcy of the United States Inc. incorporated okay you lost your government 
1933, folks. It was a corporation, and the only reason it continues is because you keep consenting. Patronizing it, calling it your father. Your oh. God. Yeah, demigod. You're, you're calling a demigod your father because it gives you things. It gives you welfare and social security benefits and veterans benefits. But on the flip side, how many of you are, is it killing? As it gives you that benefit, they're cashing in. You're only going to get 0.82% in the Devonshire Participation Program. Now, Devonshire Participation. You know the word partake means to participate, to eat up, to buy into. So what you're doing is you're partaking of the tree of knowledge in the garden right now, not past tense. And once you partake of that tree of knowledge in the garden, you've given up the garden. That's how Congress owns your garden. You're patronizing it and calling it your father, and it's giving you rights or benefits which is the doctrine of election you are never going to get both and you are never the heir Congress called itself the heir back at the original charters and said well we're seceding these estates secession means to take over an estate on behalf of a dead person on behalf of the deceased no are you dead Yes, if you're claiming to be a fiction, you're not alive, you're not be living. You're not there. You're a fiction, you're a negotiable instrument. That's right, now we get the idea of the fictitious plaintiff uh, set up in these court systems, all right? Uh, Man, I, I, we, we've explained this stuff all before. You know, th th this is where we're at now, though, in that the real sheriff has got to come forward, and the only way that's going to happen is with enough pressure and media. I, I can only do so much. Tammy can only do so much. Um, but if you don't rise up right now, you're all going to be squashed like ants. Now, we're probably facing global extinction if we don't stop what's going on real soon here with the disaster at Fukushima, all right, which is uh, uh, basically uh, due to uh, corporate greed, which was facilitated through corporations having res rights reserved over yours through that 14th Amendment, okay? Now, the idea of the 14th Amendment is nothing new, okay? But when they passed it back in the 1860s, um, that kind of solidified things for uh, the uh, corporations, and we've been on a slowly downhill slope of having human beings being thrown under the bus for the betterment of the corporations, which are your federal government through the Articles of Association, Articles of Incorporations. All right? Now, the states came into this corporate structure through the Acts of Enablement, which started in 1802, but it's no different. Not one slight difference other than what they may be called on paper. They're Acts of Enablement, Articles of Incorporation, Articles of Association. It's all one big thing. This is all one big thing. Leviathan that the ignorance of the sheeple is helped perpetuate, unfortunately, for all of us. Now, we found them guilty of genocide through their own documentation, through their own congressional action. Congress, as you may recall, means with transgression, and you keep patronizing the thing that's transgression on, transgressing on you. Um, oh man, go ahead, Tanya. I'm, I'm just... I know. It, it's very frustrating, and then we've got the pre-scribes and Pharisee coming back in again, and, and especially the last two weeks, calling us meanies for calling out the citizens and the citizens and sheeple, and they're saying, well, I'm the nice guy. I'm the church here that can offer you 
food bank services when you're starving. I'm the nice guy because I can I can feed you so much crap and you'll buy into this. You'll buy into the tree of knowledge and you'll buy these concepts from me, the Lord God. And it's so sad to see that some are still buying into this game um, because of their patronage, patriotism, because of their experiences that they've experienced. And bottom line, because of selfishness and narcissism. Because they're protecting the self over the, the other self. The one that you look at every day. That human being that's being destroyed by Congress. That child that's being raped by congressional action. That child that's being raped by the local judge, pastor, priest, psychiatrist. And all of these things that everybody has suffered. Every human being on this planet has suffered. Um, it, it used to be, you know, I, I know this girl that got raped or I know this boy that got raped and now it's, it's down to the point where I got raped, my child got raped, my niece got raped and it's, it's not hit or miss anymore. It's blatant in your face that this is what this business does and it's not ever, ever, ever I got raped by a stranger. It's, I got raped by a cop, I got raped by a teacher, I got raped by a pastor, I got raped by a priest, I got raped by a judge, I got raped by an attorney. And all of these things need to go away. Because that the, those things cannot happen, they cannot happen, if you're not patronizing that thing. And if you're removing them from the ability to harm, which is what Jesus taught. He did not teach forgiveness, he taught... <clears throat> compassionate justice remove them if the eye offends you pluck it out take it off get it away from you and forgive financial crimes which are not harm against humanity and it's just so perverted that money and things can be more important than human beings babies men women and children and here you are, still being patriotic to that thing. Okay, after we told you what they're doing. Okay, and they've even told you in their own writings that you are the enemy. Okay, the Amended Territory Act, which which uh, updated the uh, Trading with the Enemies Act, which was the uh, kickoff to World War One. That act made you the American citizen enemies of the state every single one of them. every single one of you and the 1947 national security act solidified that and said that the nations each foreign state each county each corporation has life over you which stems from the 14th amendment the, the uh, legal concept of person that thing has life above and beyond yours and so it's being protected since the 1947 uh, national security act those are foreign nations. Each corporation is defined as a foreign nation under 28 U.S.C. Chapter 97. You can find the definitions in 28 U.S.C. subsection 1603. And in this, you are being maintained to facilitate corporate welfare. So every time that, uh, what's his name with the bad hair, goes bankrupt, you're you're subscribing to that that's a millstone wrapped around your neck and you're discharging that bankruptcy by your productivity by your product uh, by being that product by being maintained as a product a fictional character in a play in a marquee the house of representatives i i just i pray every day that that you hear us. That's all it takes. I hate to tell you this, and I don't want to seem like a braggart, but this is the only game in town. We've got the only bond out there that has any weight in reality whatsoever. What you guys are buying into with the federal state is a fiction. All right? And a lot of you are going to find out the hard way. 
lot of you. Cops are finding out the hard way right now. Okay? What we was able to do in this court case is swap the surety, which had been the human beings since 1929 Geneva Convention. We swapped that with the fiction. What is the fiction? Well, those that have a fictitious government. Okay? Those uh, attorneys that uh, they uh, have a fictional government called the Bar, which includes uh, so-called judges, which we evidence in our case were not judges at all. They were attorneys wearing black dresses with stampers that say judge on them that their clerks stamp on your court papers. Okay? Psychopaths that are forever seeking the self that can never maintain their own government. If psychopath cannot have its own government, it's not able. It can say, I'm the king, I'm the king. But its works and actions do not evidence that it is anything other than a psychopath and one that is seeking the self by control. And that's where we're at now. The human being, you know who you are. You know your authority, or you will. You are the most authority you are the most important being in this game and you must realize that immediately and, and again I pray that you all hear me because this is this is you we're talking about this isn't me I'm already off the grid Bo's already off the grid I am not owned I'm not being tricked out now, with Rocco in there, this is political pressure. This is called politics. This is the game of politics. And they want Rocco to consent. They want us to purchase him. They've got a $1,000 bond without an arraignment on him at this time. They want us to purchase from them. They want us to purchase their law. I don't purchase their law. Now, I've lost everything in the last 14 years. And for all of those law enforcement and maybe the judges that might be listening right now, this last year, a year and a half ago or so, the FBI took my daughter. And upon that time when the FBI took my daughter, you know, of course she's consenting now. At that time she was 17 and, and uh, the FBI was, of course, employing uh, pedophiles. Now this year they were threatening me with harm upon my daughter and I turned around and I said you're gonna do what you're going to do now my rules are 1st Corinthians 13 I am to suffer bear all things experience all things believe all things hope all things and my rules are faith hope and charity which means trust Whatever you may do, you will do. That's your will. But I can guarantee you by the evidence you will be held accountable for your works and actions. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to go run and try to save anybody. I'm not going to purchase them from your system. Those are not my rules. You will do whatever you will do, but you will be held accountable. And that's the evidence of your works and actions is upon your doing these things. Now, you have a choice. I was given a choice in free will to either offer you resistance or allow you to do what you're going to do by which to evidence your works and actions. And in my free will, you will be evidenced according to your works. That is how you're held accountable. There's no due process there. Evidence speaks for itself. There is nothing there. Once you've done these things, you're evidence to have done these things. And we have given the opportunity to all law enforcement, to all judges, to all attorneys, to take their hands back out of the pot, to limit liability. And this is what it comes down to culpability, accountability, liability. So if you are involved in these things, even if you're not a direct actor, you will be held accountable. You know, guilty by association, for example. If you work for a criminal enterprise and my daughter happens to be killed, 
you will be held accountable for her death. <coughs> These things are evidenced by your works. And even if your peer happens to do something to one of my family members or whoever, you will be held accountable for that because your peer is a psychopath. They usually have more money than you do because you're an agent of somebody else, which means that you're the fall guy. So right now is your choice in all things, just exactly as I had a choice in all things. That's the bottom line. The Commerce Clause of the Constitution says you can do whatever you want to under acts of commerce and private acts. But the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity and the Foreign Sovereign Immunity Act says if you're caught, you're screwed. Doesn't matter who you are. And I don't care. I don't care. If you're not acting as to God's word, I could care less. Whatever happens to you will happen to you. We've been trying to reach out to you and limit your liability, limit the, um, it's actually, political cannibalism is so much like drawing and quartering. And this is why we speak to you directly day after day, hour after hour. Because I don't like to witness those things, but I know they're going to occur. But in the end, if you are guilty of harm upon a human being, you're going to be held accountable regardless. And, and uh, I know that for the uh, average citizen and the average human being, you know, that's not normal to our thought processes to, to um, you know, have hatred or have anger in us to this extent. However, that is compassionate justice. And because I'm a human being, be living state, a sovereign state of being, my children are most important. The children are most important. And if there's a threat upon humanity that is not removed, that could influence or harm my children, then what are we doing here as a, a life on this planet, as a, as a biology? What are we doing here if we can lay down, which is the law, and take all of these things without removing that harm from its ability to harm any further. What are we here for? Any other biology would have already killed the predator. They would have adapted to the point where if they're a small uh, vermin, they would have killed the wolf. Uh, they would have adapted to any and all forces and maintained death to the predator. And yet humanity, because of conceptual influence, psychological influence, and construct, they've been allowing this predation to continuously occur throughout history. And enough is enough. I do not care what happens to you if you've harmed a human being. And um, as I said, it, it's very painful. Political cannibalism is when you start praying for death of your body because it's it's the action of drawing and courting and that's what Jesus said in one hour in one hour you will lose everything yeah as this guy found out here now I started out talking about this story that we are change covered today and again I'm not gonna say that I'm a, a supporter because they're still patronizing the same the system however the news that they came out with uh, inmate writes letter about guards causing the death of a fellow inmate gets thrown in solitary confinement while others witnessed while other witnesses are transferred to other jails see this guy had a ninety six dollar fine and received a death sentence in jail from these prison guards okay that's what that that's what concerns me about what what's going on with Rocco right now all right because um you know I mean the debtor's prison system that it really is, okay, is a farce on its face to begin with. All right? Now that they have Rocco as a political prisoner, essentially, um, they have him behind bars. They're the thugs with the guns acting on a void order from this judge. You know, but this is the danger he is in. All right? And the media weight right now doesn't seem to behind doesn't seem behind us. We've got, uh, 
you know, almost 5,000 views on this video from We Are Change. Uh, I've got, uh, I've got like maybe 500 on, on uh, the latest I have featured on, uh, you know, Rockle's situation. And, um, you know, I, people just don't care unless it's sensationalized or it's got uh, a pretty uh, girl in a bikini on the cover. Um, you know, the populace is so dumbed down and programmed, all right, that, um, no, what we're saying is not popular or glamorous or exciting, all right? Well, there's some excitement, but, um, you know, people do not like hearing the truth. They want the easier to believe truth, the one that they can actually chew on and digest, all right? They don't want the kind of truth that we're telling you here about uh, what's going on and how this is the king's bankruptcy that's affecting all of us and we're under the rules of the exchequer. They want to think, oh, I live in the greatest country in the world, you know, which is a fiction created by the attorneys, by the way. Uh, you know, I lost two legs in Vietnam, but I'd happily go back and, and you know, and uh, get my third leg and uh, my two arms, you know, if necessary for the, for the you know, for the country. Oh, oh what? God. They cut off my uh, VA benefits? Oh. I hate them now. We, we got to do something about this because I lost money. But they've already killed the wife, the kids, the family members. They've broken up the family. All right? They killed my mom. They're killing your mom. They killed Phil's dad through the medical industrial complex that is the federal state, okay, that has death derivatives on you. When your insurance runs out, rest assured, you will die in these medical facilities. I don't care how good at health you are when you go in there. As we found out, and it's seen over and over again, when you go in there, your health quickly deteriorates. And now it's come out that these cocktails that they're using to now uh, kill people on death row are the same ones that they're feeding our loved ones that are allegedly being cared for. Right. And what you're not seeing is that these medications... Uh, lorazepam, hydrocodone, these depress the lungs and throughout time your body enters into congestive heart failure. Now a while back I did a call for Jessica Bingham and um, she was being arrested at that time. We ended up calling the law enforcement in Texas. They did not have their arrest listed, meaning they were probably going to take her out. Uh, they had already had their her children in their custody and care by the time I called. And this is on a YouTube channel called Miss Just Another Human, which is Jessica's mother. Yesterday, I was on my Facebook wall, and Elizabeth is in a coma at this time in Washington State. And um, I haven't had any more updates since that time. But throughout a long span of time, she was on these medications. She was on these things. She was reliant on the medical industry. And at the last moment, she tried to step out. And they it quickly, quickly turned downhill. And you can go through Miss Just Another Human's uh, YouTube channel. And watch her videos and start around October when she didn't have congestive heart failure and then you know follow it through as she's been diagnosed with diagnosis after diagnosis and at this time the last I heard was that she is in a coma and um, our thoughts and prayers go out to her um, but we've all been we've all experienced these things because of that patriotism to the hospital to the county, to the state, to the benefit, to the Medicare system. And we have to walk away from that because it always ends in death when you do that. 
Now they're playing a game out in D.C. Uh, this is on the Washington Post today. Top D.C. judge allegedly steered contract to partner's husband and lied to investigators. The district chief administrative judge allegedly steered a $43,000 city contract to the husband of a business partner, hired that business partner into a city job, and lied to investigators probing the actions the city ethics board charged to Thursday. No. No. See, this is normal day-to-day -day business for these judges. They're contracting with the local developers for, through the municipal bonds. That's what those bonds are. And what do you think it binds? These things are fixing bets, first of all. Municipal hedge funds are, are betting against and insuring the original bet. But what are these bonds? They bind human beings. And so this is what a judge normally does. This is day-to-day -day banking for the bank. However, he's being nailed for doing his job. He's being politically cannibalized. And anybody that's out there listening right now, this is a top D.C. judge, the district chief administrative law judge. This is the chief financial officer for the bank there in that incorporated state, D.C. And for all you cops and agents and attorneys and little fall guys, what do you think is coming down the pike at you for doing your job? They've taken more uh, CIA agents out. Uh, I know that in October, September, <clears throat> we were covering the story of uh, uh, the director of the CIA operations was taken out for grooming a uh, defense company in Japan. Now this last week, they're nailing several others. They're charging them with bribery and prostitution. That was their job. That was what they were told to do by their handlers. They were doing it. And now they're what? Sitting in prison, facing charges, fines, fees. They are the new surety. But to all of you fall guys out there, if you're not aware of these things and you're not seeing what's going down, you're going to be sidelined really quickly here. Yeah, I mean, um, how many times have we seen the uh, people getting, um, you know, cannibalized for doing their job, all right? You know, people want to argue with me all day long, priests and scribes out there on the Internet. And, you know, personally, I, I'm beginning to think you're all a bunch of goddamn agents because nobody could be this stupid. Look at what's going on. Well, All right, I'm sorry. This is causing a shitstorm. This is, but this is the only way for this to end. And the longer it takes for the real sheriff to come forward and do his job as a steward for humanity, the longer this plays out, and the more uh, would-be potential stewards are going to go down. Sheriffs are not immune. FBI agents are not immune. Um, congressmen are not immune. The whole dynamics of the situation has changed. Absolutely. And one of the funniest things that happened this week, for me, I'm laughing anyway, is um, the uh, officer that was charged in uh, down south. Uh, let me see where it is here. I'll get this up. Um, many officers. There was three this morning that I pulled up. So already, uh, you know, yesterday it was like six all together. And um, but this one officer, and and let me, uh, you know, create the venue here. Okay, everybody's being taught privacy, privacy laws, um, identity theft, and all of these things. Well, this officer and, and any other. Uh, undercover officer listening at this time out there you need to be aware of these things so an officer of the law law enforcement officer normally walks around and they, they do undercover work and everything 
Well, this one was doing undercover work, and, and they used different identifications, and they used different credit cards. This one was nailed for identity, identity theft for doing his job. And this is profound because you're not listening. Oh, I, I'm immune from that. I'm, I'm special because I have a different title. I'm, I'm officer so-and-so, and I have number uh, whatever, whatever on my badge, and I'm protected by that badge. No, you're not. No, you're not. They took out uh, CIA operations director, director, which is right under the CIA, right under the National Security Council. I mean, top level here, folks. They took him out for bribery when he was grooming a defense corporation in Japan, which was his function. That's what an operations director does for the CIA. And now here, you, you, uh, you know, you're, you're disappearing too. You're being murdered every day. And you're not realizing of what all is going on. Um... Uh, this week, the story was, uh, let me get it up here for that director, uh, third senior Navy official arrested in bribery prostitution scandal, and this is on NBCNews.com, National Broadcasting Corporation, quote, a third senior U.S. Navy official was arrested Wednesday and charged with accepting prostitutes, luxury travel and cash from a foreign defense contractor in exchange for classified and internal Navy information, the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of California announced. U.S. Navy Commander Jose Luis Sanchez, 41, was arrested in Tampa, Florida Wednesday. He is accused of accepting prostitutes, $100,000 in cash, and other bribes from Leonard Francis, a Malaysian contractor known in military circles simply as, quote, Fat Leonard. End quote. In turn, prosecutors said Sanchez gave sensitive U.S. Navy information to France's Singapore-based company, Glenn Defense Marine Asia, or GDMA, which helped it overcharge the Pentagon for servicing Navy ships in the Pacific. So, the Pentagon is contracting with Glenn Defense Marine Asia, or GM, GDMA, and it's rolling on its CIA operations. Hello? Hello? Is there anybody out there? <laughs> I, sh I should put that on as a break, too. Um, we should take a, a small break real quick while I grab something to drink. I'll put a song on there. Um, but these things are like crazy as can be when everybody is just... They're so dumbed down by the system. These cops that we're dealing with, they're so dumbed down. They're, they're required to have low IQs. They're taught that they're bad boys and bad girls. They go into law enforcement because they're missing their father. They're patronizing something and calling it father in exchange for this protection. What protection? What protection? Ask yourself that. And we'll be right back, folks. We're going to enter into a small break. And we're back, and you're listening to Born Tammy After Hours on These Changing Times, radio.ning.com. We are a listener-supported radio station. Morning. If you'd like to donate, please go to the homepage, and over on the right, you can find the donate button. Um, Patty allows us to have this venue, and we're so thankful to Patty and everybody, Zeets, everybody at These Changing Times, .ning.com for their efforts their work, and, and what they put into these things, you know, and uh, we've got to get the word out, we've got to get everybody standing at once, together, united, the United States of Being, which was usurped by actions of a criminal enterprise, and this is the point we're at now, Bo wanted to get into everything, it's yours, Bo. Well, yeah, okay, those songs we just heard, of course, Pink Floyd, The Timeless, and the question is, is there anybody out there? And uh, Tammy says, well, I like to let people decompress a little bit, you know. No, I said, put some snap your fingers on, because I want you to feel the shock and awe, and I want you to uh, get angry, okay? Because 
they're killing you folks all right and most of you out there are still patronizing the goddamn thing you know thankfully we're on after hours here on TCT where you know language can slip away from us from time to time and it's not my usual mo uh, mo you know mo uh, it's not my usual operating mode uh, but uh, I, I've had it I've had it I mean I started out down this thing you know just to try to get my kids back from an, um, basically an unlawful kidnapping of my kids all right little did I know that uh, in the court system I find myself slapped down by special drawing rights coming out of the uh, International Monetary Fund that is supporting that lawless woman to do whatever the fuck she wants to you all right now I've been fighting this basically uh, you know what three and a half years uh, I've had my kids uh, held by this woman who had no lawful authority to take them out of state in the first place all right and then what kind of bullshit is this they have to come into this system uh, you basically you know uh, go through the ecclesiastical route and walk the gauntlet run the gauntlet of uh, getting preyed on by these cops attorneys and so-called judges just so I could evidence this shit alright we could turn it over to uh, the House of Lords who's the keepers of the ecclesiastical law the Treasury the Treasury <clears throat> we had to um, show how the United States Incorporated had voluntarily withdrawn from the IMF to take their money away from them and that was S set up our own court all right find them guilty of genocide uh, find them guilty of human trafficking uh, okay this is all the shit I've gone through just to try to get my kids back from uh, a situation that was unlawful on its face to begin with. And for all those that will uh, cast doubt upon hearing this, that he doesn't have his kids back yet, um, Vanessa, his ex-wife, psychopath, was working for the Attorney General, <coughs> Denver County Attorney General in Colorado, and when we brought the evidence to the surface that she was human trafficking, and uh, holding children hostage in exchange for money, uh, they let her go. First they put her on administrative leave, and then ultimately she was fired. Well, what they did, and unbeknownst to them, is of course by their works and actions they're already guilty. Uh, they've already admitted by their works, by firing her and letting her go, that yes, she was guilty of those things. And what they were doing is cleaning their hands. Well, now recently she started working for Western Dairy Association which is an arm of the Denver County Corporation so they just switched her and transferred her over to another position another uh, visual presentation but it's still the same corporation and they will be held accountable for this so even though they're shifting and they're playing clean hands doctrine and everything else they're still guilty they, they hired a uh, a known kidnapper, uh, she's taken hostages, and it's not just her, and that's part of, you know, the case with Rocco as well, is that during your relationship, no matter if you had a marriage license in your hand or not, that was only a rental agreement, a rental contract with her original daddy, and she's since, and, and pre before, she was contracted with the state in the action of marriage and and that's what they're not getting at this time they they don't think that they're going to be held accountable but the husband is responsible for her debts you're not her husband she was never ever 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 married to she was always contracted with the state regardless of that piece of paper and that that is, is the actuality the physical state of marriage the contract of marriage is her contracting with the state and, and looking at the state as her husband. It's protecting her, it's providing her comfort, it's giving her jobs, and she's garnering these benefits and rights and everything else, uh, title and, and all of these things from her husband. 
and the husband is going to be held accountable, will be held accountable for, for her works. He's responsible for her. Yeah, well, not anymore um, because of the quit claim, okay? Attention, attention, all government agencies. I have quit claimed that thing known as Vanessa Denise Robinson Allsop, right? She's no longer uh, my responsibility. Federal, state, her husband, she's yours. Right, and, and that's by her works and actions. She married this state when she brought forth the false allegations. Those were never argued. She agreed that they were false allegations. The state agreed that they were false allegations. The uh, Attorney General's office agreed that they were false allegations, and that's why it let her go. Um, these things were all founded on, on and based on fraud. And uh, part of that was that she was in the action of being married to the state the entire time. You know, you're not the responsible party. You never were. But the premise was, under the rules of bankruptcy, is that the husband is responsible for her. So they had the millstone wrapped around your neck until you provided evidence that she wasn't yours. She wasn't yours to begin with. Yeah, and back in the day, I tried to do this, you know, I immediately started studying all this statute and code and all this, you know, this this mechanism that they've created. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I, I put in exhibits back then. I was using exhibits before I found the power of the admission statements, okay? All right, still coming in pleading as a citizen, expecting to get some kind of help from these courts. No, they're just there to uh, prey on me further, as right. I come to find out. Right, which is our purpose. Well, our purpose and, is to evidence them. And the, you know, and the evidence I was putting in that you would think that uh, they would they would see, but no, thanks to Star Diseases and uh, Attorney Work Product Doctrine and all these things that the attorney is created to keep evidence off the court record. No, they're not looking at that. They're looking at the surety. They're looking at who is on the hook to offset this congressional bankruptcy. And that's all you are. You're being trafficked on paper by these judges. All right? They're throwing you, uh, you know, in an act of human trafficking, throwing you on paper, and they're depositing you, and they're cashing in. On, on on everything you're trying to do, okay? And this is what you're calling the justice system. But nothing could be further from the truth. I put in hundreds of papers of documents showing, you know, how this woman had embezzled from me and got into my bank accounts, cleaned me out, ran off with the kids, all right, left me with, uh, you know, tens of thousands of credit card debts, uh, let alone the uh, mortgage with no money to pay it. So I soon found myself facing foreclosure. Now, I got, you know, the credit cards basically uh, handled statutorily. Little did I know then, though, that they were just already planning on setting me up, you know, down the road for this foreclosure. All right. Now, now I come into uh, court and arguing uh, the, the foreclosure, and I had all their forensics and, you know, all the statutory uh, curtains that they pull over on everybody, the dead man's pledge, you know, and I come up against this attorney, basically he's a third-party debt collector, Turns out this attorney is uh, he's corporate counsel. So not a, not only do I have a specialized government agent ex-wife, but uh, you know I'm dealing with corporate counsel attorney here in my foreclosure. Okay. All right. Um, so I I just I mean you you can't really explain this stuff uh, and and, and do it justice. You have to really experience it. Okay. Well, what we did is we did experience it. You know, when I finally uh, divested all title, removed my stock from the United States, Inc., 
you know, I found out, you know, what an ongoing battle that is. It's like, no, you can't do that. You're, you know, you know, get back in there and be a good surety is basically what I was being told. All right. Now, um, I said, no, well, I'm, you, you know, I'm not uh, going to uh, be party to this anymore. I'm divesting all stock, revesting in my own house. Uh, oh, Tim, you want to maybe fill in some some holes here? I'm just I'm just I'm just seeing red, and I'm thinking about you know going back Absolutely. my mind through these times. Absolutely. And as a surety, a surety can only be a natural person. So if you're claiming to be a natural person, you're out of surety. And so often, you know, we uh, we learn through through the evidence that you don't do that. Okay, so as Bo went along, and, and this is before he and I met and everything else, you know, he's saying, I want my rights. I'm a man. I'm a, I'm a living being. Come on, hear me. Well, the presumption of death is already overcome upon the summon. Well, guess what? Vanessa files for divorce. Everybody files for divorce. Everybody gets summoned. Everybody's dead. They're on the same playing field. Okay? So then the foreclosure happens. The foreclosure is founded on what? A dead pledge, mortgage. And so all of these things are overcoming the presumption of death and allowing Congress to discharge congressional bankruptcy through the use of 28 U.S.C. subsection 453, which is the judicial oath to discharge congressional bankruptcy. They're discharging their duties under that oath. And um, th their duties are what? Well, they're supposed to be paying back their bankruptcy. Unless they can ring you in there and declare you dead. So when you started coming in as the be living, uh, you began with, don't post me. Don't post me. You know, here, uh, uh, you're trying to mail the dead thing again, and we're not going to have any of that. And so that corporate counsel attorney comes in, and this is at the local level in Superior Court. He comes in and he says, I'm going to keep on posting you. He does this on record. I'm going to keep on posting you. He doesn't argue 1794 Treaty of Amity Commerce or Navigation. He doesn't have any evidence providing that he can do that. And he continues to post him. Well, so we come back at him and we say, no, you're not going to post me. I'm not in your system. I'm not a citizen. I'm not anything you're trying to call me. Well, when we came back at him, and this is outside of court. This is only through us, you know, communicating through the court in on the record. And you can see this um, at chooseyourside.org or tammypepperman.org. All of the documentation is there. And you can start, you know, uh, September of 2012. And it goes along. And, um, okay, don't post me. We were on that. We went off on him. We misspelled his name several times. So he came in to defend his title. Now here's a corporate counsel attorney, corporate counsel sitting in the local county, and, and it appears like they're just there for the county because, you know, counties are not the federal state, according to the 1802 Enablement Acts, beginning with the 1802 Enablement Acts. Well, we misspelled this guy's name several times in the document, so he comes in to defend the title, and he comes in as the federal state. That was... When we moved to, um... Before we moved to district court. Okay, before we moved to district court, right. Right. So he comes in as the federal state, and he admits that he's working on behalf of the federal state, on behalf of Congress. Okay? So then... We go along a little bit further, and, and he admits all of these things. So we come in and we say, no, okay, if you work for the federal state, we're going to call this out as a fraudulent assignment according to Article 1, Section 8, Clauses 1 and 2 of the Constitution, which maintains that human beings are to be kept on general welfare. It's not to be a corporate welfare setting in any way, shape, or form. Okay, so, and I'll stop here and remind everybody, if anybody in Congress or at the federal level or all these teachers and all these cops want to know who to blame, who threw it, who crapped the bed, 
It was Andrew P. Stewart. He came in to, to defend his title and throw it all away on behalf of the federal state because at that time he admitted that the federal state, uh, by his works and actions, were human trafficking and nothing more. Okay, so we go along. Now the, the, the uh, bank stops mid-December after this is done. This is, well, towards the end of December, I guess it was around Christmas time. And um, they stop moving. They know what their liability is, right? As the bank. Well, the bank is in, in actuality the court, uh, as defined by Black's Law Dictionary. And uh, so they stop. And then in January, we start getting eviction notices. Notices to get out of the property because they're in a hurry now. These eviction notices are not coming from the bank. They're coming from David Chaplow, the judge sitting in the Superior Court. The alleged judge. is no judge at all by his works and actions. Right. He's an attorney. So then, um, going along after these eviction notices, of course, this is a point where I threw myself under the bus because I had already done the, uh, my expatriation, which is more formal than expatriation. I actually did the hostile takeover of the franchise, and at that time, I gave it to Bo. And what that means is that we came in with standing on December 14, 2012. And um, for anybody who listens to us, you realize what that means, but I'll stop there and go back. At the, uh, it wasn't the separation, it was the coronation charter. At the coronation charter, the king came in and took my estate, the female. And at that time, he says, well, I'm going to hold on to this just in case your husbands are dead, blah, blah, blah. Then they killed off all the husbands. And ever since that time, the, quote, king has been holding the female's estate. Not the males, the females. And, uh, as and is there any question why the female's estate is, uh, you know, and her rights are reserved over the males? Right. I should answer it right there. Right, because she's shadow. She's used as a product. By the king. He's right. the king's shadow. Right. The male is just a disposable, uh, you know, competition to that king, so he wants to off you as quickly as possible. Right. And you're the dead man that's lost at sea in the 1666 accessory Kevaya. So, when that female's estate is taken over, that was all of the estates merged into one throughout time. Throughout forever. And so when Bo took me over, after I gave of myself, that means that everybody's estates were secured under Bo as the United States of being. So, I already knew this, and, and Bo and I talked about this. Now I have the utmost trust. This is what Jesus teaches in 1 Corinthians 13, Faith, Hope, and Charity. And I already knew what the court was going to do, and I already know what Bo is going to do because I trust him. So I went ahead and I went upon a motion. I didn't enter into the jurisdiction. I went upon a motion to... Um, for uh, a restraint. Uh, what did I come in as? Injunctive relief. Yeah, injunctive relief based on the 2009 Protecting Tenants Against Foreclosure Act. Right. Their own goddamn laws. Right, which is all bullshit, right? Because when I came in, I'm, I'm actually not a tenant of the bank in any way, shape, or form. I'm a tenant of both based on my forgiveness and executor doc. He's, that's a trust relationship, and so I actually reside in that trust. So I went ahead and do that knowing that Bo was going to pull me out. Now, the next part, you know, is part of 1 Corinthians 13. And so I already knew what the court was going to do, and sure enough, this attorney in the black dress represented my word. I went on, a, on a, an injunctive, uh, mo upon a motion for injunction, and he gave me a temporary stay on the writ of... Um, Execution. Writ of assistance. Writ of assistance. Right. So he completely represented my That's word. a nice way of uh, describing a writ means to kick you the fuck out onto the street. Right, right. 
But this is also the funny part, although it wasn't funny at the time. So, in return, of course, Bull writes him a letter as the executor, and he says, what the hell are you doing? You represented her word, and they called me what they call everybody else, proper person. They said I appeared in my proper person and all this. I did no such thing, as I'm already maintained as a state of being in my forgiveness and executor docs. And, um, so Which they wrote, had. Yep. Yeah, or wrote in my letter back channel. So, so the judge was with, or the so-called judge, Chaplo, is with knowledge. Absolutely. Well, and, and what most don't realize, because, you know, it's like a card kept on our hands, is that the bank never showed up that day. Okay, so this is failure to prosecute. Well, we knew all of these things prior to this. So Bull writes the judge a letter and says, this is Executive Ace and Tort, yada, yada. You can find this in the documents, which, of course, pissed the judge off. Pissed him off. It says Bo has authority and you don't have authority. And this judge reacted accordingly. He kicked us out immediately. 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 He didn't wait for anything. He just whipped his little pecker out and, and showed us. And that was the most profound thing is that the judge was acting as the bank. Yeah, this, mind you, is when we had already entered into the United States District Court. Absolutely. Which, by their own laws, once again, all that Superior Court stuff, lower court action, is supposed to halt immediately. Absolutely. They don't care about that. No, we already knew what they were going to do, because that's, that's what Jesus directs us to do in 1 Corinthians 13. Experience all things so that you can get the evidence to hold them accountable. And that's what we were doing. So we're in district court at the same time we're being kicked out of the house and everything else. And um, in district court, we put in the, um, you know, you can see it on the docs. Just go to the docs. I'm not going to get into a bunch of details. So here I am prayed on. Okay. Yeah, before you even left the court that day, don't forget that that judge had uh, sick some... Uh sicko uh, adult protection services guy to cost you right as you were trying to scurry out the house of ball right and that was another funny aspect that we were able to evidence so in between as we're fighting this they're hitting us from all sides with fortune rights and warfare and so uh we were telling the gas company don't post me now the gas company of course is involved in all of this that is the corporate governance. Uh, the Sesame K Trust are actually uh, set up in utility companies. Uh, That's right. Company. You people out there want to know where your your money from your uh, estate's being hidden. It's being held in those those uh, utilities companies, and you can see this uh, from Massachusetts Land Trust document. Right. That declarations, I should probably declarations of trust is substitute substitutes for incorporation. Now those are declarations and. You know, I wish I should we probably put them. those up so people can get those too. Right. Well, a declaration. So they can is, see how they've been scammed. Right. A declaration is something said. It's not something done. It's not physical. It's still a fiction. So they can declare their trust all they want to, but their trusts are always a fictional character of a trust, which is called fiduciary. So regardless, again, they don't have any standing. So the gas company, what they did was they shut off the gas first, and of course, I'm a, I'm not in their system i'm i'm a separate country than they are under my forgiveness and executive docs and so they had perpetrated war crimes against my country so i put that in the court we put that in the court because you know they're perpetrating criminal acts and we turned back the, we turned the gas back on or it appeared to be back on anyway so then they came out and they told the entire gas meter thing and so this is in the middle of winter. In the middle of winter. So, and that's the reason that when I was in court that day, they sipped adult protection on me. This guy came up to me, and offered to. He said, "Honey, are you having are you having any difficulties?" And I'm like, "No, I'm fine." He says, "Do you need cash assistance? We can give you cash. I can set you up a new house. I can do all of these things." Well, that's the action of hearts and minds. That's a war tactic, in order to divide me from the male. And for all intents and purposes, for, you know, 
that yeah, that's under a trust agreement, that's a union. So their function, that snake in the garden, his function is to divide the male and the female so that I can be preyed on by offering me those benefits. Anyway, so it took me about 10, 15 minutes to get out of there and get away from this guy because he's very persistent. And of course, I'm, I'm, you know, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Leave me alone, leave me alone. And he kept coming back at me. Do you need this? Do you need this? And I'll offer you this, 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 and this. And He gets financial assistance, or he gets financial incentives, rather, uh, for per perpetuating these things, you know, so many sign-ups. It's, it's a piecemeal thing, I'm sure. Absolutely. Federal drawing rights, uh, special drawing rights, sorry, and treasury funds for helping the female under feminism. And um, no, I didn't contract with them. I declined all of their offers because I'm not about to go away from the male. I have no intentions of contracting with the snake in the garden. So I get out of there, yada, yada. Uh, we eventually get... You know, evicted, the sheriff comes out, armed to the teeth, um, all of these things. I don't remember. There was like three of them there. And then this dancing um, real estate agent. And, um, you know, since that time, he killed one of the cats. Um, he grand theft auto on the Jimmy, which is still ongoing, which is the funny part. You know, and during the time that we were retrieving this, things from this property... Um, you know, I, I looked this guy in the face and I said, look, I've never lost a case. I never intend on losing a case. And um, eventually you're going to be held accountable, but you're going to be used as a fall guy because you're the one that we see. You know, this is, these are all presentations put on by the marquee. Well, he doesn't listen to me. He just he, he laughs and he made his money and everything else. And, um, you know, and then... Eventually, we had so many cases going on at that point in time. It wasn't only ours. We were evidencing that they were preying on children, preying on females in between, and we're doing all of these things. And, and of course, Bo's busier than, than any of us. <coughs> and um, that's what happened in March. So we get to March here. Uh, March 5th, the International Monetary Fund was given evidence not only of the evidence they were preying on me as a female, they were preying on children, they were preying on other females as well, and they got that evidence. And by the 8th, the United States Incorporated was voluntary withdraw voluntarily withdrawn from the International Monetary Fund based on their, their works and actions because they weren't using the special drawing rights to protect females. They were using special drawing rights to prey on them and children. And you want evidence of this, again, go to the Dropbox link to chooseyourside.org, TammyPepperman.org, go to the documents page and uh, pull up the IMF screenshots. Right. So then it starts getting exciting. Okay, this judge now, we're dealing with, um, what was his name in district? Uh, Simon. Simon. Simon, yeah. Simon says. Yeah. Simon, Simon Bar Sinister. Simon was funny. So he came in. There was no motion from anybody to dismiss. That was a valid motion to dismiss because it came from corporate counsel. It came from corporate counsel in South Bend, Indiana, the St. Joseph County. And they came in and solidified the judgment at that time by appearing on behalf of St. Joseph County. And what that is is a cognitive judgment. So we won the judgment then. Then we go along and uh, we, of course, overruled Simon several times because he wasn't adhering to any law. He wasn't maintaining that he had any authority whatsoever. And he couldn't... Um, be a judge. He wasn't acting as a judge and, and so we kept slamming him down for that and eventually the company corporation came in on appearance with their attorneys which was a cognitive judgment against the corporation, um, the, the company corporation. Um, Northern Holdings came in on appearance of their attorney which was a cognitive judgment against Northern Holdings. Um, by May we had the agreed entry with Northern Holdings. We uh, issued that uh, agreed entry. It was never argued by the bank, court, or anybody else. The United States Incorporated. And all of this time, of course, we're following the rules of 
of uh, service and everything else. Senate was served. Um, they opened theirs, their summon, and upon opening it, they sealed it back up with tape, said open for inspection, and attempted to send it back, as did the company corporation, but we already had receipt that they had received it. And these are the funny things is that, um, you know, that, that just doesn't happen. You know, they, they, it's just... Can you explain time. for our listeners that may not know who the company corporation is? That's the one with all of the utilities stuck into it as a holding corporation. Yes. And so, and this is all under Northern Holdings. Now, there's lots of lots and lots of holding corporations and everything else, but Northern Holding has no parent company. It is the father of all of the others. So it holds the medical industry, it holds the criminal industry, it holds the insurance, it holds everything. And everybody is under uh, Northern Holding, which is, of course, the Geneva uh, 8, Geneva 28, all of these things are in line with Northern Holdings. That's what, that is what that is. It's the um, International Association of Corporations there because they've been bankrupt since 1933 and Congress has uh, global governance since 1941 in the Atlantic Charter. So, we, you know, all of these things, again, they can be read in all of the documents as they go through. Um, they're in line with everything that occurred um, in between, you know, we were doing Chris's case in, in Minnesota. And uh, we came in as the United States in that case as well and when we did we said look this appears to be uh at that time we were saying this is appearing to be a child sex trafficking ring uh you know you're you're facilitating these things these things were never argued and the most um profound aspect of that was the court came back at chris and said well if you want us to do anything you're gonna have to denounce the House of Alsop and say that you're not a citizen of the House of Alsop or the United States and um, in a court order in a court order now in that judgment the uh, foreign judgment is solidified by the cognizant judgment of course and that female's attorney came in of course and uh, you know asked that state for a restraining order all of these things but she had solidified that judgment against Minnesota against that county, Kearns County, all of these things, and um, again, that was part of the evidence that was uh, provided the uh, International Monetary Fund May through or March through um, May June, and um, you know, of course, we're doing other things, you know, back channel throughout time, and and um, you know, but those are some of the little details of. In a nutshell, I guess, there was a lot more that was occurring. The theft of the Jimmy, uh, killing of the cat, killing of the fish. Um, all of the fish were murdered by this guy. Um, you know, just the, the most uh, disgusting things. But again, it's relative to the implication of fourth generation warfare. It's all pressure. All of the pressure is provided by the corporate governance by the agents and actors employed by the corporate governance. And so all of this time, you know, it's intended to break us. That's its intent. Low intensity conflict is to uh, maintain, to force you, coerce you into consenting to their authority. And again, I already know they're a criminal enterprise. I'm not gonna consent with these idiots. You know, and so, and, and, and that's something that they don't realize because since the separation of the spiritual and temporal way, way back when, the male and the female have been separated. They've been allowing interference by the state. She's been running off through use of advertisement to go and, and consent for on behalf of him, which is another aspect of, of the um, uh, facilitation or action of matrimony, giving all things to the mother. The male was never allowed to hold any estate ever, 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 ever. If he survived her in marriage, he could garner what is known as courtesy estate, but only if they had children, so it was passing to the children, and of course this only passes to the female children. 
because she is is the estate and you know the male's been set up as you know whatever whatever heir but he hasn't existed as the heir until December 14 2012 when I gave the estate to the male knowing without a doubt that he was going to hold on to it on behalf of all of humanity and without a doubt that he would continue to protect us and continue to facilitate that trust or that union and allowing the United States of being to have standing. Now what needs to be you know realized here is that Congress came in with letters patent kings come in with letters patent and they say well I described you so I am the patent holder on this thing I'm the one with the benefits and by consent that was being facilitated but it never had a foundation in the physics on December 14, 2012, the United States actually had physical property in their hands. The same property that Congress has been maintaining they own, the same property that the king said he owned, went to the mail, which allowed the United States of being every and all standing ability, because it's the only one with property. So we have all these shoes out there that are telling you come get aboard their ship because they're going to show you how to find the remedy which involves uh, pleading in these courts of ball uh, which are not courts but they're business places. It's a place of business folks. You guys are, are looking for relief and remedy to these corporations calling themselves courts. And you wonder why you're not getting uh, justice, okay? Well, you're not going to get justice in this manner because the most you can ever even hope for is 0.82%, as Tammy's been teaching under the, uh, that's with the... Uh, Devonshire Participation Program, or under the CUSIP number, CUSIP bonds. Yep, the CUSIP bonds. So, you have to really wonder about what all these other people are pushing and why now that they're coming on even stronger. You would think that some of these guys that uh, were uh, more into the uh, esoteric type uh, ideas of law and ancient law and things like that would get this. And, again, I'm thinking they do, but uh, they've got another function and you know that is to be a saboteur okay or what I like to call a shoe um, we've got the cure we've got the cure right here and uh, all the world's at your fingertips you have standing you own the property thanks to Bull Bo didn't hold on to the property and say, well, this is mine. He came into the United States District Court as the United States of Being. Now, the whole United States across the globe, every human being owns that property, that land, that estate. That's right, and that's exactly what I want. I want human beings to have property. I want them to have their houses. I want them to have their ability to to just be, to grow their own food, to raise their families without the interference of this federal state. Let's call it for what it is. It's a confederacy that's constantly siphoning off your wealth and killing you. I've had it. I've seen relatives in, in previous generations come out of wars, uh, you know, messed up because of the psychological damage. I mean, they were lucky in the sense that they came back with all their limbs, most of them. 
but the psychological damage and trauma lasts the rest of their lives. Okay, and what were they doing it for? They were doing it for the offsetting of congressional bankruptcy for Congress. Garnering new citizens by taking over new countries, new peoples. And these things, you know, that's a, Vietnam was a creation of the CIA. The CIA went in there and was on the ground providing the artificial intelligence by which to facilitate war. Korean War was the same thing. Japanese War, Syrian War, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan. This is all CIA infiltrating that country and promoting artificial intelligence to you to say, well, there's a civil war. We need to kill some people to get rid of this civil war. They're the ones that are causing these things. Those citizens are the same as you and I. They're just sitting there in their houses and they're like, oh my God, there's a civil war going on. We need help. Help me, help me. And they call on their government, which is in treaty agreement with the United States Incorporated, as the United States Incorporated, to discharge congressional bankruptcy. By how? Low intensity conflict, fourth generation warfare, offering them hearts and minds. Oh, you guys are hurting here. I have a Department of Health and Human Services, and we can offer you food stamps and housing benefits and social security programs and welfare benefits and stuff. Come and on all that stuff here. that you would probably need in the first place if the attorneys hadn't taken them off you in the first right. place. Right. You didn't need welfare before that because you could grow your own freaking food, raise your own farm, raise your own family. Nobody was interceding in your estate. You already owned that property. It was yours. Before you gave it up by patronizing the same thing that's attacking you and killing you. Now, they don't know any better, right? They don't speak English. They've got a whole bunch of English-speaking people there that are teaching them English and saying, I'm the good guy. I'm the nice guy. Here's some welfare benefits. And what happened with the Malaysians when that happened? Well, you covered that story. Hearts and Minds, the, the term, the definition came about when the uh, Britain entered into the Malaysian population, garnered the females by offering them medical and food aid. And what happened this year, there was this woman that you had reported on yeah. that had a baby that she couldn't see because she was kept as a political prisoner 23 hours a day. She could get out one hour a day to go see her baby because she had accepted welfare benefits. She was imprisoned. Yeah. Yeah. There's, no, just, there's just another video of mine that got maybe 300 hits or something like that. I don't know. I guess um, people think sheeple think that if they ignore it, it's going to go away. It's not going away. It's right on top of you. You are in the war. You are inside of the war. You just don't feel it because it's sold to you as low intensity conflict. You've got CPS here. You've got the courts. You've got everything else offering you all of these little trinkets, little tiny things that you're trading your soul for. You're selling your soul every time you put a signature down on those documents and say, yes, I'm going to assign somebody to pay this off for me or I'm going to pledge myself or whatever else. That, that, that's the action of selling your soul. That's the bag of silver that Judas or with laws offered. And these same people are the ones that are going to stomp their feet and say, I want my constitutional rights. And you're getting them. You are being killed equally. Just as much as your neighbor is being killed. You have equal rights to be murdered. You have equal rights to be raped. You have equal rights and your children have equal rights to be molested by judges, psychiatrists, and attorneys. You have the same right as anybody else to be killed by the medical industry. To be driven insane by fourth generation warfare or the psychological industry. Or to be criminalized just like your neighbor. You have equal rights to your neighbor to be criminalized. To discharge congressional bankruptcy. You're all created equal as fictions. And if you, if you need a little more prodding, 
Okay, they got corporate counsel attorneys directing them cops to go rough you up a bit, uh, pull you over for uh, a headlight out, uh, turn that into a uh, search and seizure, throw you in jail, and uh, maybe kill you for a $96 fine. That's your benefits. This all ends when you people stop purchasing your law from these psychopaths. Revelation 18. When you stop fornicating, when you, the whore of Babylon, stop fornicating, as defined in 1 Corinthians 6, you can only fornicate by giving your body over to the Lord God or an owner of it. When you stop fornicating, Babel falls. And that's when the law merchants will. And that's why we see all of these agents now whining and crying. And you can go to any one of our YouTube videos and you'll find an agent there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Most everybody that comments is an agent. Uh, it's just it's so profound to watch how they're wailing. They're crying. They don't want this to happen. We had an attorney uh, yesterday on one of them uh, telling me to quit uh, calling it the public law. Yeah. No, we got to go back to the natural law, she says. Uh, yeah, common law. Yeah, only. Do common law and natural law in there together. Right. The surety is a natural person. Only a natural person can be a surety. Common law is communism. Absolutely. 19, case law. 19, see case presidents. Yep, 1938 star diseases. Which says basically, well, we ruled this way before in another case. So this is where we're ruling your case. Next. Yep. That's it. It's communism. It's redistribution of the individual or individualism. We're going to lump all of these rights together in a group. And we have to find this way because of that group. And that's what redistributes the individual created by constitutional theory. If you claim to be an individual, you'll, you're not filled up with your soul. You're filled up with the Constitution. What somebody else tells you that you consist of. That's what a Constitution is. Now they're calling you a thing. This is the rights that go with this thing. These are the rights that go with that thing. These are the rights to go with that thing. That thing is called a res, R-E-S. That means thing. So when you're providing to them that you're a resident, you're a thing. If you're claiming to be an individual, you're filled up with constitutional theory. A fiction. It's a theory. And you're buying into this and walking around as fictions. What does that mean? 1666 says for says you're lost at sea. You have no idea who you are at, at all. And until you're the dead man, come back from being lost at sea, which is exactly what it says, then you're forever dead. And you can overcome the presumption of death. 28 U.S.C. subsection 108. No. 38 U.S.C. subsection 108, sorry, is the seven-year absence presumption of death. Well, you're presumed to be lost and dead, but they can't declare you dead until you admit it. How do you admit it? When you receive a summon in the mail, they're summoning the dead. If you accept that and answer it, you're answering as the dead. When you sign a mortgage, that's a dead pledge. You're overcoming the presumption that you're dead. At that time, you're saying, I'm dead. Now you need to come back from the Sea of Commerce, same sea that Jesus walked on. He walked on water. He walked on top of the Sea of Commerce. He didn't stick his feet in that. He didn't play their games. He went off on them. Stop swimming around in the Sea of Commerce. Once you're above the Sea of Commerce and you're walking on water, you can hold them accountable and ring that millstone around their neck and allow them to drown in the Sea of Commerce. Because they're a fictional creation just as much as you were. An attorney is more so. It even has a pretend government, an imaginary government. A court, a judge. Those, those, these bankers, they have a fictional employer. 
that doesn't exist. The judge is the bank. The attorneys are the bank. And they're all in the same good old boys club. Many of them will be down at the golf course, playing golf together. Uh, district attorneys, judges, attorneys, probably chief of police, sheriffs. Okay, might even be in the same Masonic Lodge together. Okay, they're the good old boys club, and they're going to protect each other. Okay, where does that leave you, the citizen? Under the bus with the wheels spinning. Well, and that conversation that you put up for me on your wall um, that I had had with the marshals and law enforcement and everything else, and I'm trying to tell them I was never served by the bank. The bank does not have legs or arms. It has no humanity whatsoever. It's a fiction. It's a concept in the mind, created in the mind. The bank does not exist. Attorneys exist. Attorneys are colorful titles for beings, entities holding those titles, adhering to a fictional government. But you're not dealing with bank. A bank doesn't have arms and legs. It cannot walk up to my door and serve me anything. The bank is represented by attorneys and judges and sheriffs, law enforcement. You know, that's something that we have the hardest time with, with, you know, everybody being able to hear us, is that the bank does not exist. It is attorneys. Only attorneys. The bank is owned by attorneys. The court is owned by attorneys. All of these things. Court, Congress is run by attorneys. Yes. These are general counsel. General counsel, attorneys. Board of directors. Corporate counsel. Barry Colder. All of these things are just attorneys. You look at a corporation, Walmart, who runs it? Attorneys. Sears, attorneys. Turner Broadcasting, attorneys. Comcast, attorneys. Google, attorneys. Who have you, you always told, who have you always been told to go to when you got legal troubles? Go get an attorney. Absolutely. They teach you that from, you know, the, uh, Matlock back in, uh, whatever. Absolutely, because he was such a good guy. First he was Andy Griffith. You have to go from the inception of indoctrination to the extension. So you have... Andy Griffith is just this good boy chef, and he just, he's so wondrous, wondrous. And then he's even more wondrous than as an attorney, and he's facilitating, quote, court that never existed. Never existed. That's a concept. A court, if there was an actual court, it would be bound by a judge, bound by judicial canon, according to the, just that concept alone. That those things never existed. They're, they're, they're banks. And part of the indoctrination process is convincing the human mind to take up these concepts and believe they exist. And that's what happened to God in the garden. The Lord God said, well, I'm creating man. I'll just name it Adam. Adam means man. That's a concept. Stole God a bunch of concepts and taught God that he was not. And that's the point we're at now, is you've got Satan, your adversary, telling you that you're not God. You don't have any authority because their fiction trumps you, the reality. Now, how does that make sense? You know, you talk about the golden calf. What the heck is fictional governments? Fictional religion? Fictional churches? Church means a group of people. All of these fictional things that are developed and groomed in the mind to to appear in the mind to exist. That's called imagination. You not only have imaginary friends, you have an imaginary government, imaginary corporations, imaginary structures. They don't exist. And in these critters' minds, they have more significance than a human life.
Absolutely. That was the intent of the 14th Amendment. The clergy for Congress, Abraham Lincoln, came in and redefined what life is. The person is a corporation. Well, the irony life. of it is, with the example of Fukushima, they've breathed life into this Leviathan, this tentacle known as TEPCO, who is now, what is now, in the process of exterminating, I don't know how many millions of people over the next 300, 400 years until this mess is cleaned up. All right? This is why we got to stop this now. I mean, if you allow this to go on, you're going to have more corporations getting away with this stuff, all protected by their limited liability corporation structure and attorneys reserving that fictional corporation rights over yours. Which is corporatism. Now, for every corporation that thinks they're untouchable, or for every employee of the corporation, because of course they're run by attorneys, I have news for you. Environmentalism redistributes corporatism. It's a means and mechanism just as much as feminism is used in the court process to reduce you with the male. You could think of it as um, in the terms of the uh, fictional borderlines the attorneys set up, you know, United Statesism and Canadism. Right. Got Russianism and um, Ukrainianism. Right, but they're all internal structures of the creative fiction. Mm -hmm. You know, all of these things. The corporation as a person is the equivalent to the individual created by constitutional theory. Well, the individual is redistributed through communism, case law, common law, which is feminism and racism. Those things are communal things, communism, that lump people together in groups by which to redistribute the individual. Now, environmentalism is like the big feminism, the big racism, the big Judaism, the big Catholicism, the big Zionism. That thing is intended to wipe out the corpor corporations as the individual, the created person. And that's the most profound thing to see because inside of environmentalism, what do you have to redistribute the corporations? Feminism, racism. And so they're being pulled apart from the inside out. And these are, again, these are not run by uh, human beings. The citizens work for them. And some citizens benefit by, by playing into the stock market. But these corporations are being taken apart on purpose by attorneys because attorneys benefit. Now, everybody's watching how um, Microsoft is being nailed again for, you know, insider trading and all these things. Microsoft sits on the Association of Corporate Counsel. It is the General Counsel, so it's redistributing itself. And who suffers? The stockholders and people who work for Microsoft. Who gets paid? The attorneys playing this game, which is insider trading, the same thing that they're charging Microsoft for. Because it's the attorney that owns the corporation there. Please, please, please wrap your mind around this cartoon because it's going to come down to the point where it's hurting everybody. And at that point, it is Nazi Germany and everybody can't scream out because they're actually in chains. Just recently, we, we saw the geoengineering that created havoc and held down in Georgia and Alabama. Okay, so everybody was put into fear. Now, they're expecting a little bit more snow here coming soon. And so they have the National Guard on ready, on standby. That is the FEMA camp that you guys have been waiting for. It's already there. Okay, you guys went into fear. You guys can't drive or shit in the wintertime. Two inches of snow.